with the director of Dior and I, Mr. Fred Ching. 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 It's just the most common Chinese name. <laughs> so the most common name in the world, probably. <laughs> yes. I, but, you know, of course, I was making it more difficult. I'm like, Frederic? Frederic? Yes. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. No, nice, nice. call me Fred, though. Fred. Okay. Well, hey, Fred. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Now, I want to just jump right in here. How has, you know, the process and the recognition of Dior and I been for you? Like, how do you feel about that? Ooh, it was, it's been so intense. Mm -hmm. um, the, the process of making it was very intense. Mm -hmm. um, we only had eight weeks to shoot. Oh, and wow. then, um, you know, it was my first uh, film as the only director. Mm -hmm. You know, I've collaborated on other movies, but this was like a step up. So it was nerve wracking. And, um, and then the reception has been also another roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, the film's been received very well. And I've been traveling all around, all around, just to 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 talk about it and promote it, and um, and now it's coming to the theaters. So you know, it's like now real people get to see it, you right? Know, not just the festival, the press. Mm -hmm. um, now it's like the real audience, which is the big test. So I hope it's going to be. You know, it's been playing in New York for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Now it's opening in Dallas um, and forty other cities um, this weekend. So it's and then you know in. In two more weeks, we'll open in like a hundred or two hundred theaters. Oh, wow. It's gonna, it's much bigger than I ever expected it to be, and so it's thrilling and scary and <laughs> overwhelming. Right. Well, that's kind of you know interesting to hear from you. You've been award winning, you know, and you've also played a part in the Valentino movie. Right. So you know, why did you choose Dior? What what represents Dior to you? Well, being French. You know, uh, growing up in France, like Dior has always been such a legend and such a institution. Mm -hmm. And um, and when I met someone at Dior, it was sort of a chance encounter. I met someone at Dior um, four months before Raph Simmons was appointed, and so I. The, the question was like, what's going to happen next with the House of Dior? And I, I was immediately sort of interested, and, and they. I could tell that the that Dior was open to to um, uh, the idea of documenting, you know, mm -hmm. the, the arrival of a designer. But then, you know, I was like, oh, do I really want to make another fashion documentary? I'm not sure. Um, you know, I don't come from fashion. Mm -hmm. I come from the film background. Okay. Um, and um, when I read that Raph Simmons was one of the candidates, and I started doing some research about about Raph. Mm -hmm. I totally changed my mind. I was mm -hmm. like, this is something I need to make. If Raf gets appointed, um, I need to make this film because for me it's just... Um, fashion with Raf is such a different story than, than the stereotypes okay. of fashion. Mm -hmm. He's um, For me, he's almost like a painter, an, art, an artist. I, I have a huge amount of respect for him. Um, the way he collaborates, the way he transforms his influences in, into something modern and new. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was completely uh, in love with his creative process and I wanted to get to know him um, um, as he worked. So when he was actually appointed, you know, I, was, uh, I jumped on the plane. Right. <laughs> Is that why you felt that it was important to kind of tell his story about, you know, his first hot couture collection for Dior? Yeah, yeah also it was the first Haute Couture collection, so he's never done couture before. Right. And um, you could, you know, I sensed that it was going to be a transformation, mm -hmm. you know, for him personally. Mm -hmm. Also, Dior is such a, a, a bigger house than anything he's done before, so the level of exposure is going to be very high, and he's someone who's camera shy, so it was going to be interesting to see how he reacted to, to all that. To the pressure. I know, um, in the film, you featured a lot of, well, not a lot, but Dior, Christian Dior himself, you know, appeared and you used a lot of his quotes and things. Why was that important for you to kind of like mix the two? Well, obviously, um, Raf had to contend with the past. Mm -hmm. You know, he had to <clears throat> think about what the, what the founder had achieved mm -hmm. um, and Christian Dior was only at the helm of his couture house for 10 years he died 
abruptly um, in 1957, mm -hmm. and yet he's be he's created this house that's uh, that's become so big mm -hmm. and that's um, has managed to stay, you know, relevant throughout right. all these years right. with different people uh, at the helm. And so Raf has to go back to um, the history of the house and. You know, he's not creating in a vacuum, he's creating for Christian Dior. And so he has to ask himself, like, how do I transform the legacy into something that also represents me? Because right. it's Raph Simmons for Christian Dior. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a very interesting um, creative struggle, I think, for me. Um, um, as a filmmaker, I feel like when you deal with a documentary subject, you also have to create the right distance between you and your subject. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of parallels, you know, between the film process that I was going through and, and then what um, um, Raf and his team were going through. And um, so I decided to use um, the autobiography of Christian Dior that he wrote mm -hmm. a year before he died. Hmm. It's a very beautiful text. Uh, Is that the film simple. that Raf mentioned that he was reading? The, it's the book that he was okay. reading. I'm sorry, yeah, book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In the film, he mentioned that he was reading a book, and he had to. Yes, exactly. He mentioned that. that he couldn't, he couldn't go past the first 15 pages right. because he felt like it was too similar to right. his own process, mm -hmm. and he was spooked by it, you know. Like, yeah. And and um, as soon as he said that, I knew that there was something. Um, in the relationship between Christian Dior and him that was uh, fundamental, you know, for the film, that was kind of um, the core mm -hmm. of, of the film in, ter in terms of uh, the house moving forward. And so I started uh, imagining Christian Dior as a ghost, you know, who's like haunting the house mm -hmm. and um, whose presence is felt very strongly by, by everyone. Because, yeah, you're rather Dior even now, like, 55 years after he died and everyone's talking about him hmm. and there are pictures huge posters of him everywhere wow. in, in each room so there's no forgetting that you know, he's the founder of the house mm -hmm. so that's how you know we approach him like a ghost mm -hmm. okay so what was your most memorable moment you know while filming and presenting the document or showcasing the documentary um, um, with Raph well, I mean, we shot a lot, you know, and we shot 270 hours of footage mm -hmm. um, in eight weeks. We had, like, very limited time, so I wanted to make sure we had enough footage to make a feature film. And um, in the end, we wanted the film to be 90 minutes, so there's a lot that has ended up on the cutting room floor. Mm -hmm. um, especially individual dresses that, you know, that were so beautiful, and we captured the process of each of them. But in the end, we didn't, we couldn't include every dress, um, and also the film was not just the collection; it was more the process of making the collection. So mm -hmm. it was important to just talk talk to the seamstresses much more, and 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 maybe have less time for the show in the end to showcase really each dress. Right. You know, but people can go on YouTube and they can watch the full show if they want. To. Right. <laughs> I know with Raph Simmons, there was a lot of pressure on his shoulders, you know, to present this collection. But I, I, in my opinion, he handled it with, you know, grace. But he also got a lot of, you know, critics saying, oh, he's a minimalist. You know, how can he design a hot couture collection? You know, and I really appreciate you for showcasing that in the documentary. But why was that important that you felt, you know, this is something that people need to see? Well, it's a human... Um, journey, you know, the film is character based and uh, it's based on uh, Raf and his team, the, the people around him. That's how I make films, I always focus on the character, and I felt like, you know, um, there's something that he needs to overcome in order to, to succeed, and, and, and that something is the, the public image that he has, you mm -hmm. know, that people perceive him as being a minimalist, but and so perceive that he's not going to be able to succeed. So he has this obstacle, you know, to sort of overcome. And I think it's just um, important to see how he's um, basically stepped up, you know, mm -hmm. um, to the to the plate and just like um, 
defies challenges what people right. expect of him. Okay. Well, that's about all we have time for today. I appreciate you joining me, Fred. Thank you. Guys, make sure you head out to the theaters to see Dior and I. It comes to theaters when? Today. Today, Friday, yes. April 24th. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you check it out. I know last night, like I said at the Angelica, got rave reviews from everybody that had the opportunity to see it. So it's gonna open here in Dallas and Plano at the Angelica. Mm -hmm. Dior and I is something that you, you definitely wanna see. It gives you an up close and personal, intimate look of the fashion house of Dior and Roth. So I appreciate you, Fred. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. And we'll see you later, guys.